Australia versus England is one of the greatest rivalries in sport. For more than a century, the world has been captivated by the quest for the iconic little urn. And where better to take a moment to relive some of the extraordinary memories and colourful characters of this historic rivalry than here in Australia's magnificent backyard. Today's guest donned the baggy green an incredible 128 times. Recognised as one of the most elegant batters of his time, he also excelled in the field and is regarded as one of the best slip fielders to ever play the game. Hey, what do you reckon my campsite? Mate, surprising, BJ. I didn't think you had it in you, but uh, I'm impressed, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. How long have you been a camper for? Oh, mate, many years. I camp all the time. I, I didn't think he went west of uh, Anzac Parade, actually. Well, that's incorrect. Mate, that probably <laughs> took me about 20 minutes, sorry. 20 With minutes? Butter? You're kidding. Yeah. Hey, mate, we're in the middle of another Ashes campaign. Can you tell me, why is Ashes cricket so big? Is it the ultimate battle? I, I think it is. When you're growing up as a junior cricketer and a teenager, you just want to play in an Ashes test mm. because it's just the history. I grew up watching Australia, England, staying up all night watching on TV, you know, the Bob Willis's, Ian Botham. I clearly remember Dougie Walters swatting Bob Willis for six off the last ball of the day at the Wacker to bring up his 100. Remember that game? Mm -hmm. I remember that, yeah, 74, that, 75. Sort of, yeah, those memories clearly stick in my mind. All right, let's move forward. January 25, 1991, mm -hmm. your debut, Adelaide Oval. Yes, well, very memorable, of course. You, you always dream of playing for your country. Took Stephen's spot, of course, which is, you know, every, everyone remembers that. Yeah, well, how hard was that? It wasn't hard for me. It was pretty, pretty tough for Stephen. But I remember him telling me, oh, you're in the test team. That was the first, the way I found out. So he's the first one that told you? Yeah, he told me. And I said, oh, wow, that's good. I said, who, who got dropped? He goes, well, I did. <laughs> so that was a bit awkward. Well, at least it's better to have one more in the team than none. So, yeah, I, I clearly remember that. And then, obviously, the test match uh, was the Australia Day long weekend. So, tell me about that morning walking to the Adelaide Oval, and it's always a great walk with lots of people streaming in. It's day mm. one of a test match. You knew you were going to play, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I knew I was in at uh, number six. That's the position I'd, I'd um, taken Stephen's spot. I think there was uh, Marsh, uh, Taylor, Boone, Border, Jones in front of me. Mm. So, uh, AB wins the toss, you bat first. You go in after lunch. So, how was it sitting in that? First session? Well, I was a bit nervous. Obviously, you're a bit nervous, but I was in really good form when I got picked, which helped. I think I scored 3,000 first class runs in that season, counting Essex and New South Wales. So, yeah. picked at the right time, I guess. We were four for 104 when I went in. Dean Jones got out, so that's when I went in. Um, we lost David Boone shortly after, so five for 124. So, we're in a bit of trouble. Greg Matthews comes in, mm. and uh, to this day, he says he, he carried me in that innings, that partnership. We put on, well, oh, I think about 174. Yeah. And my first shot, I remember that. I hit um, my first scoring shot, I hit Philip DeFreitas down through mid on for three. That's how I got off the mark. You know, the nerves were gone to a certain degree. Once you get to 20 or 30, I think then you start to relax. But that, the first 10 minutes, you know, you're pretty nervous. And then, you know, you get to 50 and you're getting close to 100. Are you starting to think about, gee, I could be getting 100 on debut here? Not really. I, I was scoring that quick. I, I scored nearly 100 in the session. So, I was just hitting boundary after boundary and got into the 90s. Then to get my 100, Phil Tufnell bowled me a short ball outside yeah. off stump and I just punched it through the gap for four, that was it. Talk about being in the zone, yeah. well that was that innings and yeah, everything just hit the middle of the bat. You're overnight 116 I reckon. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. You go into the change room, do you start to then process what's just happened? Oh, I think you do. I mean, obviously you sort of there's plenty of adrenaline going through your body. As you walk up the stairs there at Adelaide, you walk in front of the dressing room, the old dressing room, your guys are sort of leaning over the balcony, sort of, you know, clapping and, you know, a few shaking hands as you, as you walk past them and you just went in the dressing room and obviously I would have celebrated, but thought maybe I can get 200 tomorrow. There's a rumour going around yeah. that you went, well, it's not really that hard. Oh, I, Did I, you say that? I think I might have joked, geez, they should have picked me a couple of years ago, something like that. Um, sort of a joke, yeah. What about some lunch? Mate, are you cooking? I heard you're yeah. pretty good on the barbie. Yeah, no, I'm going to whip up some, some sausages, sausages and a uh, yeah. few steaks yeah. as well. Come on, that's good go. stuff. What do you reckon, barbecue? All right. Mate, I reckon your whole campsite's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Actually, barbecue is my speciality. What? See, I don't, reckon you've, cook I don't reckon you've cooked in your life. 
You're kidding. No. Don't stop talking about yourself. No. All right, this is my barbecue. Oh, uh, you're not cooking. You, you have no hot dog or you're having bread. <laughs> Got me a long night. <laughs>